and welcome to Millennium News Hour. I am Tanzeepa Naudin. In today's bulletin, we will present top and trending news from across the nation and the world. Let's begin with the headlines of the day. Black Hawk helicopter crashes in Alabama, killing two crew. One killed, three hurt in shooting at El Paso, Texas shopping mall. Arizona Interested reopens after deadly crash leak. Biden completes medical checkup as he readies for 2024 run. Blinken off to Europe amid soaring tensions with China. Trump election probe grand jury believes some witnesses lied. EPA head says Ohio train is spill site as residents demand info. US launches artificial intelligence military use initiative. Amanda Gorman writes children's book Something Someday. China blasts U.S. over response to Chinese balloon incursion. Pakistan train explosion kills one, owns eight passengers. Ukraine says Russia turns to decoy missiles, intel balloons. Revealers celebrate street carnival across German Rhineland. Unions vow to disrupt France in March as protest ranks thin. China Iran call on Afghanistan to end restrictions on women. Israeli FM promises cooperation with Ukraine against Iran. Philippines quake causes hospital evacuation, minor damage. Judge slaps 335k penalty on Ronaldo accuser's Vegas lawyer. Celtics remove interim tag, name Joe Mazzula head coach. And Shifrin wins gold thanks former coach after surprise split. Now news in detail. A Black Hawk helicopter from the Tennessee National Guard crashed Wednesday in Alabama, killing two crew members, the Tennessee National Guard said. We are deeply saddened by the loss of two Tennessee National Guardsmen, and our prayers are with their families during this heartbreaking tragedy. Brigadier General Warner Ross, Tennessee's Adjutant General, said in a statement. We ask Tennesseans to join us in supporting their families during this time of unthinkable grief. According to Ross, two members of the Tennessee National Guard were killed during a flight training mission. The helicopter crashed around 3 p.m. local time and caught fire. The Madison County Sheriff's Office said there were no injuries to anyone on the ground when the helicopter crashed. We have no survivors, Sheriff's Investigator Brent Peterson said. We have a crime scene here. We have it taped off. The UH-60 helicopter, more widely known as a Black Hawk, crashed in the 
unincorporated community of Harvest along Alabama Highway 53, the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency said in a statement. One person was killed and three more were wanted Wednesday in a shooting at a shopping mall in El Paso, Texas, adding to the dozens of people already killed this year in mass shootings across the United States. El Paso police said hours after the gunfire that two people had been taken into custody, though details of what led the shooting remained unclear. Interim Police Chief Peter Basila said that Cielo Vista Mall was still considered a crime scene and that it would remain locked down until authorities had completed their investigation. Basilus stressed that the danger had passed. There is no more danger. I want to repeat that. There is no more danger to the public, Basilus said. The shooting happened in a busy shopping area and across a large parking lot from a Walmart where 23 people were killed in a racist attack targeting Hispanic people in 2019. El Paso, with a largely Latin population of about 700,000 people, sits on the U.S. border with Mexico, where residents of both countries cross frequently. The main freeway in southern Arizona reopened in both directions Wednesday evening, and officials said people leaving southeast of downtown Tucson could return home a day after a deadly crash sent acrid plumes into the desert sky and prompted evacuations. The public may resume normal activities, Arizona's Department of Public Safety said in a statement Wednesday night. Less than two miles of Interstate 10 had been closed in both directions for more than a full day after a truck tractor pulling a box trailer crashed Tuesday afternoon. Residents within a half mile of the crash initially were told to leave and those within one mile were told to shelter in place after liquid nitric acid was determined to be leaking from the rig. The shelter-in-place order was extended for a time to three miles but was lifted altogether by Wednesday night. Before that, area residents were told to turn off heaters and air conditioning systems that bring in outside air. The acid sent up airy yellow and red plumes over a section of the Asphalt roadway that runs through dry land scattered with scrub brush. The interstate stretches across the entirety of southern Arizona in its nearly 2,500-mile coast-to-coast sweep from Santa Monica, California to Jacksonville, Florida. President Joe Biden had a routine medical checkup Thursday at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. A keenly watched exam as the oldest president in history makes plans for an expected re-election campaign. Biden was at the hospital in Bethesda, Maryland for about three hours before leaving by helicopter shortly after noon for the White House. The White House was expected to release a letter later Thursday that would discuss the results. The exam was straightforward, White House Press Secretary Karen Jean Pierre told reporters. They're working to finalize the memo. Biden, 80, last had a standard medical exam in November 2021. During that five-hour-plus visit, he went through a combination of blood, physical, gastrointestinal, dental, vision, and neurological tests. Afterward, Dr. Kevin O'Connor, Biden's primary care physician since 2009, signed a six-page memo that called Biden healthy, vigorous, and deemed him fit to successfully execute the duties of the presidency. Soaring U.S. tensions with China, pairs of a new Russian offensive against Ukraine and a stalemate with Turkey over NATO expansion will top Secretary of State Antony Blinken's agenda as he heads to Europe this week. Blinken left Washington on Thursday for nearly a week of meetings in Germany, Turkey and Greece. The State Department said Wednesday. He starts his six-day trip at the Munich Security Conference, where he will join Vice President Kamala Harris in representing the Biden administration. A speculation is high that Blinken might use the opportunity to meet top Chinese foreign policy official Wang Yi, who will also be attending the Munich Conference. No such meeting is yet scheduled, but if one takes place, it would be the first high-level discussion with China since Blinken postponed a trip to China last week over its suspected spy balloon. 
A wide array of other senior foreign officials will also be at the Munich conference, and apart from increasing worries over Chinese surveillance activities, the situation in Ukraine ahead of an anticipated spring offensive by Russia is expected to be a prime concern. The conference is taking place on the eve of the one-year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and last year's iteration was dominated by warnings from the US and its NATO allies that a war was imminent. A special grand jury that investigated a force by then-President Donald Trump and his allies to overturn his election laws in Georgia says it believes some witnesses committed perjury and it recommends that prosecutors seek charges. The panel recommended that the district attorney seek appropriate indictments for such crimes where the evidence is compelling. In addition to the section on perjury, the report's introduction and conclusion were released Thursday. But any recommendations on potential criminal charges for a specific people will remain under wraps for now. While the report is silent on key details, including who the panel believes committed perjury and whether other indictments should be pursued, it marks the first time the grand juror's recommendations for criminal charges tied to the case have been made public. The investigation is one of several that could have serious legal consequences for the former president as he ramps up his third bid for the presidency. Despite Trump's persistent contentions, the grand jurors found by a unanimous vote that no widespread fraud took place in the Georgia 2020 presidential election that could result in overturning the election. Residents of the Ohio village upended by a freight train derailment packed a gymnasium demanding reassurances after toxic chemicals spilled and burned in a huge plume over their homes and businesses. State officials insisted yet again that testing shows the air is safe to breathe around East Palestine, where just under 5,000 people live near the Pennsylvania state line. They promised that air and water monitoring would continue. Many who had waited in a long line snaking outside the gym came away frustrated that they didn't hear anything new. Some booed or loved each time they heard the village mayor or state health director assured them that lingering odors from the huge plumes of smoke aren't dangerous and the water is fine to drink. In the nearly two weeks since the derailment forced evacuations, residents have complained about suffering from headaches and irritated eyes and finding their cars and lawns covered in soot. The hazardous chemicals that spilled from the train killed thousands of fish and residents have talked about finding dying or sick pets and wildlife. With the community in the national spotlight, U.S. Environmental Protection Agency Administrator Michael Regan prepared to visit Thursday to assess the ongoing response and hear from impacted residents. The United States launched an initiative Thursday promoting international cooperation on the responsible use of artificial intelligence and autonomous weapons by militaries, seeking to impose order on an emerging technology that has the potential to change the way war is waged. As a rapidly changing technology, we have an obligation to create strong norms of responsible behavior concerning military uses of AI and in a way that keeps in mind that applications of AI by militaries will undoubtedly change in the coming years. Bonnie Jenkins, the State Department's Undersecretary for Arms Control and International Security, said. She said the U.S. political declaration, which contains non-legally binding guidelines outlining best practices for responsible military use of AI, can be a focal point for international cooperation. Jenkins launched the declaration at the end of a two-day conference in The Hague that took on additional urgency as advances in drone technology amid the Russia's war in Ukraine have accelerated a trend that could soon bring the world's first fully autonomous fighting robots to the battlefield. Amanda Gorman's next literary project is a collaboration with a prize-winning illustrator for a children's book coming out this fall. Viking Children's Books announced Wednesday that Something Someday by Gorman and Christian Robinson is scheduled for September 26. 
Viking is calling the book a message of hope about the ability to make a difference in a troubled world. I wrote something someday to show that though it might be difficult, when we work together, even the smallest acts of kindness can lead to the largest positive change, the 24-year-old government said in a statement. Gorman became an international sensation after reading her poem, The Hill We Climbed, at President Joe Biden's inauguration in 2021. I have long admired Christian's art and having the opportunity to collaborate with him has been a dream come true. I hope that readers find joy and inspiration in something someday, and I can't wait for it to be out in the world. Robinson has illustrated books ranging from Last Stop on Market Street, written by Matt de la Pena, to The Bench by Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. Now it's time for global updates. China's ceremonial parliament has accused American lawmakers of trampling on the sovereignty of other nations after the U.S. passed a measure condemning a suspected Chinese spy balloon's intrusion into U.S. airspace. The statement issued Thursday by the National People's Congress's Foreign Affairs Committee repeated Beijing's insistence that the balloon was an unmanned civilian weather research airship. A claim the U.S. has dismissed citing its flight route and payload of surveillance equipment. While China at first expressed regret over the February 4 incident, it has toughened its rhetoric in a further sign of how badly relations between the sides have deteriorated in recent years. On Wednesday, the foreign ministry said it will take measures against U.S. entities somehow related to the downing of the balloon without giving details. A powerful explosion inside a moving passenger train killed at least one person and wounded eight others in eastern Pakistan on Thursday, police and railway spokesman said. District Police Chief Mia Mahbub said the explosion happened in Chichawatni, a district in the eastern Punjab province. He said officers were still trying to determine whether it was a bomb or something else that caused the explosion while the train traveled between Quetta, the capital of southwestern Balochistan province, to the northwestern city of Peshawar. There was no immediate claim of responsibility. For a decade, Balochistan has been the scene of a low-intensity insurgency by ethnic Baloch separatists who want autonomy or independence. They often target passenger trains and security forces in Balochistan. Russia again pummeled Ukraine with a barrage of crews and other missiles on Thursday, hitting targets from east to west as the world's one-year anniversary nears. One of the strikes killed a 79-year-old woman and injured at least seven other people, Ukrainian authorities said. Russian forces used a variety of missile types, firing 36 in a two-hour overnight burst, Ukraine's military chief Valery Zelensky said. Ukrainian air defense batteries shot down 16 of them, he said, a lower rate of success than against some previous Russian waves. Ukrainian authorities say targets in the north, west, south, east and center of the country were struck. The head of Ukraine's presidential office, Andrei Yermak, said Russian forces changed their tactics for the strike, deploying what he described as active reconnaissance and false targets. Russian troops had launched balloons with corner reflectors to deceive Ukraine's air defense as part of an effort to retake some battlefield advantage after months of setbacks. Oleksiy Danilov, the Secretary of Ukraine's National Security and Defense Council, said. Tens of thousands of revelers danced in the streets of Cologne, Dusseldorf, Bonn and other cities and towns across the Rhineland Thursday as they celebrated the traditional start of Carnival in Germany. Dressed up in bright colors and creative costumes, they sang loudly and swayed to familiar tunes of brass bands and folklore music and drank lots of beer. It is the first time since the start of the pandemic 
that carnival is being celebrated in Germany without any coronavirus restrictions. The first day of carnival in Germany is also traditionally dedicated to women taking over the power in city halls across the Rhineland for a day. The symbolically take away the keys from the mostly male mayors and cut off men's ties and shoelaces in return for kisses. In Dusseldorf, costumed elderly women known as Monen stormed city hall at 11.11 a.m. German news agency DPA reported. In Cologne alone, tens of thousands of people were expected for the festivities. Police deployed more than 2,000 officers and the Interior Minister of North Rhine-Westphalia, where Cologne is located, warned revelers not to drink too much quelch, the typical honey-colored beer of Cologne. A fifth day of nationwide strikes and protests in France Thursday tested the government's resolve on a controversial pension reform, the flagship policy of President Emmanuel Macron's second term. This latest in a series of protests that began last month is expected to be less disruptive than on previous occasions, with the Paris Metro and most mainline train services working normally and most schools unaffected. Fewer people were expected this time amid school holidays and as unions look toward March 7, when a rolling general strike has been called. A railway worker walkout will, however, disrupt high-speed TGV trains and regional services. Almost a third of flights were cancelled at Paris' second busiest airport early, and traffic will be interrupted at regional airports as well. The proposed pension reforms aimed at raising the minimum retirement age from 62 to 64 have unleashed the most turbulent debate in years in the National Assembly, with uncertainty looming over the final outcome. Opponents filed thousands of amendments to delay debate, now making it uncertain if the lower house will actually get to debate the famed Article 7 which sets out the change to the age of retirement before a key deadline on Friday. The pension bill, whether or not it has been fully debated, will then automatically go to the Senate, the upper house, for consideration. China and Iran have urged mutual neighbor Afghanistan to end restrictions on women's work and education. The call came in a joint statement Thursday issued at the close of a visit to Beijing by Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi during which the two sides affirmed close economic and political ties and their rejection of Western standards of human rights and democracy. Since taking over Afghanistan in August 2021, the Taliban has banned women and girls from universities and schools after the sixth grade and forced out those in elected offices and other prominent positions. The two sides called on the Afghan rulers to form an inclusive government in which all ethnic groups and political groups actually participate and cancel all discriminatory measures against women ethnic minorities and other religions, the statement said, adding that the US and its NATO allies should be responsible for the current situation in Afghanistan. The US had backed Afghanistan's elected government against the Taliban, but withdrew amid the rising cost and dwindling domestic support for a government that was unable to counter a Taliban revival. Israel's foreign minister on Thursday made the first public visit to Ukraine by a senior Israeli official since Russia's invasion last year, pledging financial aid to the war-battered country but giving no indication that Israel is ready to provide weapons to Ukraine. At a joint press conference with his Ukrainian counterpart, Foreign Minister Eli Cohen said Israel would provide a 200 million loan for construction of a healthcare facility. He also reiterated an Israeli offer to help Ukraine develop a smart early warning air raid system. But he gave no specifics on when that system might be delivered, made no mention of Russia and did not appear to respond to Ukrainian appeals for Israel to provide offensive weaponry. Israel, as stated in the past, stands firmly in solidarity with the people of Ukraine and remains committed to the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine, Cohen said. 
The visit came just before the first anniversary of Russia's invasion and as Western nations seek to increase aid to the country. A strong earthquake rocked the central Philippine province on Thursday, sending people out of their homes at night, prompting dozens of patients to be evacuated from a hospital and causing minor damage to a government, coliseum and business establishments, officials said. There were no immediate reports of injuries or major damage from the magnitude 6 quake that was set off by a local fault line at a depth of 10 kilometers, about 11 kilometers west of the coastal town of Batuan in Mesbet province, officials said. The quake struck about two hours after midnight, rousing many people from their sleep, Mesbet provincial disaster mitigation officer Adonis Dilaw said. Now it's time for business news. Today's New York stock close price is 16,016.09. The NYSE composite is decreased by 9.02 points or 0.06%. Tokyo stock close price is 27,696.44. The Nikkei 225 index is increased by 194.58 points or 0.71%. Shanghai stock close price is 3249.0295. The Shanghai Composite Index is decreased by 31.46 points or 0.96%. Hong Kong stock close price is 20,987.67. The Hang Seng index is increased by 175.50 points or 0.84%. Bombay stock close price is 61,319.51. The Sensex index is increased by 44.42 points or 0.07%. Let's have a look on today's sports stories. A Las Vegas lawyer has been hit with a 335,000 penalty for pressing a bid in U.S. courts to force Cristiano Ronaldo to pay millions of dollars, more than the 375,000 in hush money he paid to a Nevada woman who claimed the international soccer star raped her in Las Vegas in 2009. I find that Ronaldo would not have incurred a majority of the fees and cost that he spent on this litigation absent plaintiff's counsel's bad faith. U.S. District Judge Jennifer Dorsey said in a sketching 18-page ruling. The judge in Las Vegas held plaintiff Catherine Mayorga's attorney, Leslie Mark Stovall, personally responsible for paying Ronaldo's attorneys, led by Peter Christiansen and Kendall Works. Stovall and associates in the case, Ross Moynihan and Larissa Drokoviczer, did not immediately respond Wednesday to email and telephone messages about the ruling issued Tuesday. The Boston Celtics named Joe Mazzulla their full-time head coach on Thursday, removing the interim tag he has held throughout the season after stepping in for Amy Idoka. Idoka was initially given a year-long suspension before training camp for having an inappropriate relationship with the woman in the organization. The 34-year-old Mazula, a assistant under Idoka last season, will now replace his former boss who will not return. Mazula is the NBA's youngest head coach. Terms of his new deal were not immediately available. Michaela Schifrin covered her mouth with her fluorescent orange mittens and then collapsed to the snow, still breathing heavily as her entire body pulsated from the exertion of her gold medal winning run. 
What a relief after a hectic week for the American skier. Having endured a small protest aimed at her by environmentalists who mistakenly thought she was using a helicopter for training. Schifrin's team was thrown into disarray two days before the giant slalom at the World Championships when her long-time coach Mike Day left suddenly when Schifrin told him she wanted to change her stuff at the end of the season. It's been definitely some high levels of stress these days, Schifrin said. It was very, very difficult today to keep the focus and keep the intensity on the right level. Day had coached Schifrin since 2016 and was with her for 65 of her 85 World Cup wins. Schifrin needs just one more win to match Ingemar Stenmark's overall record of 86 victories, having already broken Lindsay Vaughn's women's mark of 82 wins. Let's have a look on today's weather forecast. That's all in today's news. Keep watching Millennium News 24 for latest updates. Millennium TV USA and Millennium News 24 network is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TV such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jadu TV, Radio and IP TV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with us for all types of informative and entertainment program. Thank you.